All right, thanks for watching. And today I wanna do something really cool. I wanna find all the matrices whose square is the zero matrix. And again, I will do this using the theory of linear algebra just to illustrate how powerful this theory is. And the first thing to understand is Unlike real numbers, matrices behave real weirdly because there are certainly non-zero matrices whose square is zero. For example, this matrix. If you calculate this, you do get that the square of this is the zero matrix. And the question is, what do all those matrices look like? So I'll give you a general form. Um, I'm not sure how to interpret it geometrically, but it's still nice. And it's all based on this claim, which is a very classical exercise on li in linear algebra. First of all, um, in order to a square to be defined, the number of columns of a must be equal to the number of rows of a. And that's why this only works for square matrices. Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense to talk about a square. And in particular, what we would like to find is all the linear transformations t, such that t squared equals to the zero transformation. Namely, the function that does, takes any vector and puts it to zero. And here's the big claim. t squared equals to the zero transformation if and only if, geometrically, the range of t is included in the null space of t. So what does that mean? We have a linear operator, if you want, from v to v. Well, it takes v and spits it to the range of t. And what this is saying is the only way t squared could be 0 is if this range is included in the null space. So the null space is some space in V where all the vectors get sent to zero. And what this is saying is the only way T squared is zero is if it takes all the vectors in V and traps it inside the null space. Think of those as being criminals and this is like a prison and we're just taking all the criminals to go to prison, more or less. <laughs> Uh, but we're very nicer here. Um, okay, and let me show this. So it's a very cute proof. So first of all, suppose t squared is a zero matrix and let y be in the range. So if y is an arbitrary element of the range of t, then we know by definition of the range that at y equals to t of x for some x. Okay, but then let's calculate t of y. Well, t of y, it's t of t of x. But we know that t squared is 0. So this is t squared of x, and that's basically 0 times x, which is 0. So what does t do to this arbitrary element? It sends it to 0. And so by definition, y is in the null space. So if y is in the range, then y is in the null space, and that just means that the range is in the null space. Now, conversely, suppose the range is included in the null space. Let's show that t squared equals 0. Well, t squared of x, that's t of t of x. Now here's the thing. t of x is of the form t of something. And that's by definition being in the range. It's a possible output of t. So it's in the range of t, but we know the range is in the null space. So in particular, t of x is in the null space. But what does it mean for something to be in the null space? It means t of that something is zero. In particular, t of that null space vector is zero, so this is zero. And therefore, t squared of x equals 0 for all x. Therefore, t is the 0 transformation. All right? Very good, because it turns out in using this thing, we can actually, uh, well, I don't know if, we can, if it's based on that, but uh, 
we can actually um, uh, calculate the matrix uh, in that way. So, and to do this, let's first, uh, oh yeah, we, we do need to calculate this, right? Uh, <laughs> I didn't just waste your time. And in order again to calculate a matrix, all you need is basis vectors of V. And the idea is what we will do, we will start with basis vectors of the null space and then extend it to basis vectors of V. So let, let's say V1, V1 up to Vp be a basis for the null space. N of t. And then just take this mini basis. So you see V1 up to Vp. That's N of t. And let's extend it to a basis of V. So we have those other vectors Vp plus 1 up to uh, Vn. Extend. To a basis, again, V1 up to Vp, and then Vp plus 1, da, 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 and then uh, Vn of V. And all we need to do is calculate the matrix of our linear transformation. So here the matrix of T, it's simply, so if one, let's call this beta, and then we calculate the matrix of T with respect to beta. All we need to do is calculate T of our VIs. So this is V1 up to VP. Well, if you calculate T of those, of those vectors in the null space, well, you just get zero. So which tells us that the first P columns of T have to be zero. So zero, zero zero. So bunch of zeros and then let's see what happens to vp plus 1 to vn. Now suppose you calculate t of vj where j is greater or equal to p plus 1. Well t of vj uh, by definition it's in the range right because it's of the form something uh, t of something. But We've just seen if t squared is zero, then the range is included in the null space, which is in the span of actually, right? The null space is equal to the span of the first p vectors. What does that tell us? It tells us t of vj it's just a linear combination of actually just of first p vectors. Which tells us to find your matrix, well, you might have non-zero values, but then starting from the pth value, so I guess p plus first value, you just get a bunch of zeros. Which tells us that our matrix is actually just made up of a block matrix. And this is really how all the matrices whose square is zero look like. They have a bunch of zeros, and then zero, and then some star. Except what you need to make sure of, so that's why some people are like, oh, well, there might be counterexamples. Not really. You need to make sure that the length of this column, which is p, is equal to the length of this row, which is also p. So, for example, what does such a matrix look like? Consider the following. So let's say just the first column is zero. Okay. Then what it means is the only non-zero entries, so since this has size one, the only non-zero entries have to be in those two columns. So let's say one, two, and then everything else is zero. And so at least with respect to this basis, that's what all the, uh, Let's call it, mm, all the 
linear transformations whose square is zero look like? And in general, if you have any other basis, well, you then just use a change of coordinates matrix. So the answer is really uh, P times, again, this block matrix with a bunch of stars, and then P inverse. That's why it's okay, for example, if those two columns are switched or something. It's not in this example, but in general, this is true. And those are, again, really all the matrices. And how did we do this? Not with a calculation, but with this geometric interpretation that those, I think, called nilpotent, you know, square nilpotent matrices are such that the range is included in the null space. All right, so I hope you like this linear transformation excursion. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.